symbol of excellence in sports entertainment. Welcome to Arn. This is Paul Bromwell, and I'm excited to be joined today by the Hall of Famer, the founder of the Four Horsemen, the creator of the Spine Buster, serious business. You know why you're here. You're here to listen to Arn Anderson. I know that I am best tag team wrestler of all time. I mean, Arn, how are you this week? As this drops on the main feed, Saturday the 12th, you and Brock are all over the place. Isn't that right, my friend? You're in Indianapolis, Indiana. Yeah, we got a busy day today. We're going to go to the Indy Fanboy Expo at the Fairgrounds. Right. And we're going to sign from about 10 to somewhere around 4 or 5. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to jump in the car and we're going to drive to Dayton, Ohio, to the Calumet Center Revolver Pro Wrestling. And we're going to sign some autographs and meet some of those fans and then we're going to go right back spend the night in uh indy and we're going to sign all day sunday so we got a full weekend and we're thrilled to be doing it there you go man this is your opportunity last chance if you're listening to this on that saturday morning for those of you on ad free shows you're getting this early uh, but for those of you listening to this fresh in the morning on Saturday the 12th, that's where Arn's going to be. If you're in the area, go check it out. Go shake his hand. Say hi to he and Brock and take advantage of this opportunity. Arn, uh, man, uh, just I, we talked about it on last week's show, how much you'd like to engage with the fans and uh, who've really helped support your career and are now supporting your son's career. How cool is that? Very grateful, very thankful, and I want to tell every one of you, Thank you. Mm, there you go. Well, buddy, before we do jump in today's show, also wanted just to take a moment to, again, talk about two weeks from now, you and Brock are also appearing at WrestleCade, man. Big time event, November 26th. I can't even believe that we're already here at Thanksgiving season. Can you? We're, you're about to trim that turkey, dish those mashed potatoes, eat some of Do you call it stuffing or dressing? What's dressing. This? Dressing. Okay. You a big dressing fan? With giblet gravy. Oh, okay. Dark meat. Dark meat turkey. <laughs> so the day after Arn enjoys himself around the uh, the Anderson table, we'll call it, he's going to be heading on down to Winston-Salem, North Kakalaki, Ian Brock, and they're going to be a part of this big-time 10-year anniversary show. You're scheduled to be there from 10 o'clock to 3, uh, 3 o'clock, Arn. Photos, meet and greets. And you said it last year, packed table, and you can't wait to be there. You know, you had some pretty good advice. You actually asked if I had a diaper on because I didn't get a chance to take a pee spot. <laughs> May just wear one this year. You might need to. Hey. Or Jim, Jim Ross said the black pants were always his gimmick for never hey. being able to well, leave. The, yeah. I laugh, but I thought about it for a minute, and I went, okay. You're going to take yourself away. God, God knows how walk how far to find a bathroom. <laughs> They're always packed. You stand in line. That's By the time right. you get back, you you know, if I had a diaper on, I could just adult pull up, man. I'm telling you, this could be the magic trick that makes you more money because you're available at all times to sign those autographs and take those pictures. Well, and don't keep anybody waiting. They spend in line to take care of your customers. That's right. That's They're right. not sitting there in line and getting sore knees and, you know, the, so there you go. That's a solution for everybody. Just trying to help you out here. So a dopper now does not solve all life's problems, <laughs> but a major one, but this one may be a good <laughs> assist. Uh, it's good stuff. And Hey man, but you're not done after that, you know, spending the day there. It's the big event, the big time wrestling show the next day at the Dorton arena in Raleigh. Uh, we've talked about it for the last few weeks, but it's Brock Jay lethal and that mystery partner who you guys have no clue who it is. You've said it on the show. Absolutely. No idea against FTR and the hall of famer. One of your longtime friends, Ricky, the Dragon Steamboat. Man, I tell you what, as it gets closer, you and Brock have to be so excited for this opportunity. I'm excited for him, and it's not lost on him who he's in there with. You know, this is Ricky Steamboat, for God's sakes. FTR, they're, the, they're what's happening today. But 
Ricky Steamboat is so smooth. He will be in tip-top shape if I know him because his ego will demand it. And, man, he's going to get in there and cut up. I, I don't give us a whole lot of chance in winning this thing, but it's kind of with those deals where just being a part of it is bigger than anything else going on that day. It's going to be a special day. You're going to want to be in attendance for it again. All things Thanksgiving weekend. Make sure you check it out. Big time wrestling. You can Google it. You can find it. Dorton Arena, Raleigh, North Carolina. Get your tickets and make sure you're there. By the way, I don't know, uh, Arn, um, if our listeners are aware or not, but on adfreeshows.com, which we love, we're a part of, your son Brock just did a show with Carrie Morton. Uh, there's a new show, bonus show content out there called Family Business, where Carrie Morton's going to sit down and talk to that second and third generational wrestler and, and do an episode. And his first episode was with your son, Brock, and it's out there available now on Odd Free Shows. So another cool experience. Yeah, and I listened to it, and they both handled themselves remarkably well. Mm. Carrie's got a future in that. He, he does. He, he's very personable. Asked all the right questions, dug in there a little deep, but just a pleasant kid. You know, having Ricky Morton for a, <laughs> for a dad, I imagine, <laughs> pretty overwhelming. Um, but it sounds like he's learned a lot of his humility and uh, just common sense about the business. And he has a lot of enthusiasm, which is cool, too. And how can't you? You know, you said it. Apple doesn't fall far from the tree with Ricky. And uh, just a young young kid learning the business, but so good. He's a natural. So check it out. Ad free shows. You're going to get all that bonus content, including episode one with Brock Anderson. And you get to know Brock a little bit better and a little bit more than what you see um, maybe on Dark or Elevation or on Dynamite or Rampage. So there you go. It's good to know that 100-and-something grand I spent it putting him through ECU actually paid off somewhere. There you go. And now he is. He's in the wrestling ring. Oh, man. Well, Arn, hey, listen, let's jump into it. We're discussing September of 1990. September, big month personally for you and I. Uh, you know, so mm, 1990. Birthday month. Birthday, birthday month. That's right. That's right. So September of 1990, Arn, you would have been what? Uh, I'm not even going to say. It's not important. Okay. All right. Well, listen, we're uh, we're going to go through September 90. I would have been turning 13 that that month when all this is going down and you're <laughs> just wouldn't let it lay, would you? Uh, I didn't say you're eight, yeah. but I'd have been the 13. But you, but I think it's cool because it shows you where your audience is for this show is is I'm, I'm 45 years old right now and and the bulk of your audience was probably right there around that age number that grew up on this stuff you know late 30s early 40s even into uh you know early you know 50s but this was your career and the, the time of your career that we remember and look back so fondly on and that we appreciate and that's your fan base man and uh so we're going to jump into september to our listeners continue to submit questions on social media when you have them when you see those posts please infuse this show we want to infuse the show for the questions that you have uh that way we can ask arn and he can answer those for you that's what it's all about uh, we want to bring it to life to you, for you as well. Next week's going to be a big one, though, dude. It's Halloween Havoc 1990, uh, so be on the lookout if you want to ask the enforcer a question on that. Uh, but today we're discussing the road to Halloween Havoc. Aren't you ready to take that trip down memory lane? Let's do it. All right, here we go. Uh, so I want to begin our uh, coverage this month with the creation of, here we go, Arn, the Black Scorpion. In hindsight, we all agree this is a snake bit, terrible no good, god awful idea, and probably was from uh, Jump Street. But with all that being said, this was the creative direction the company took with the franchise sting, right, wrong, and or indifferent. And the character was introduced on August twelfth edition of Main Event, right here around this time. And at this taping, it was decided that the Black Scorpion would face Sting for the title at Clash of the Champions Fall Brawl. Uh, but subsequent to this announcement on August twenty fourth, Nature Boy denied that the Black Scorpion uh, was affiliated with the Horseman and said he was focusing on defeating Lex Luger for the U.S. title and route to getting a rematch with Sting for the big gold. Uh, the Black Scorpion also conducted an interview on the 25th stating he was uh, someone from Sting's past. So that got us all trying to think about who it could be, specifically 1986 and from California. 
The Black Scorpion went on to say he was going to destroy Sting and Sting would not recognize his face. <sighs> All right, Arn. So fans of the Tony and JR's podcast have heard both Jim and Tony Schiavone recall the creation of the Scorpion. Both JR and Tony claim that Ole Anderson created this character in response to badgering from Jim Hurd, who wanted to take Flair out of the title picture and create a new opponent for Sting. Ole didn't have any real direction. So this was more of a his own smart ass response. Arn, what do you remember about the creation of the Black Scorpion? Oh, it was a terrible idea. <laughs> yeah. The outfit looked terrible. There was no real God, direction on where it was going to end up. I think it was just plugging holes on TV each week. Uh, Oli was the voice. Yes. That grumbly, uh, the grumbly uh, deep voice of the black. Yes. So, yeah, it was, uh, I think for lack of a better thing to do, they, they definitely heard it had enough of flair by now. But, now, but here you go. He's letting these personal issues with flair all of a sudden now impact the booking of sting. I mean, get, he, he's a pizza what, salesman. He wasn't in the wrestling business. Yeah. It was a personal deal. You know, he tried to tell Rick what to do. Rick said, no, I got, you know, I got a contract, ironclad, and it just built and built and built. You know, he wanted to cut Flair's hair and put a uh, diamond stud in his, you know, earring in and call him Spartacus. I mean, it, it was a clash of Johnson's. <laughs> Well, well said, and, and it's and it's it's true. So not only do you have Jim Hurd and Ric Flair, they got their beef going on. Now you see it impacting Sting's booking and where, where, who he can face. And and but now poor here you got Ole. I almost said poor Ole, but Ole's the booker, and he's just got to try to make you know chicken salad, as they say, out of chicken shit with all this. I mean, he's he, he's got to be out of ideas, patience, probably both at this point. I would imagine, and I just remember. Hey, uh, I did what I was told. Yeah. No matter how stupid I thought any of it was, what are you going to do? I've, I've left the only other place that I can make a good living. I've left there, so I'm here. That's the only other option. Ride it out. Some of our listeners have some questions about this topic, so we're going to start with uh, Dylan Apple. He wants to know, Arn, how bad of a reveal was the Black Scorpion? The build-up, the promos were intriguing, but the reveal was uh, pr purely awful. Popcorn fart. All right, there's that There's that one, popcorn fart. Uh, well, we're going to cover Starcade 1990 in the coming weeks where it's revealed that Flair is the Black Scorpion due to the problems with the booking and the politics inside the company. But for now, our next question, Scott Golden. Arn, if you can book the identity of the Black Scorpion, who do you put behind the mask? One choice in WCW and one choice outside the company. I would have never went that route. So you, wouldn't even, you wouldn't even go on there to begin with? No, uh, it was a failing proposition to begin with. The outfit looked cheap. The only way something like that works is when it is a huge star from another company walking in the door for the first time. So say, say everybody's a free agent and you can have your choice of if you're going to pick somebody coming in, who would you pick? To, you think at this time would have been a, a fun opponent for Sting? Kurt Hanning. Okay. I did not see that coming, but that's Very good. Very talented. And if you could have had a good looking outfit, even though once he pulled the mask off, he's going to go back to being Mr. Perfect. In yeah. some fashion, but make the not just just plain black tights and a plain black top and plain black, I guess. Mask. Yeah, mask. Yeah, it looked cheesy. It looked like something you could buy at the, uh, down at the grocery so store. generic and boring. Yeah, for a Halloween Cheap. costume. Yeah, yes. it was. Yeah, it just was the shits. It it was awful all around. But if you'd have had a real star under there and had some like a luchador outfit or something to throw you off, yeah, like it was going to be Mil Mascaris or somebody like you know of that nature, and then it turned out to be you know Kurt Henning. Now you got something. But. 
There used to be speculation too because of his link with the Ultimate Warrior, the Blade Runners. Remember, it said California Connection, nineteen eighty six. Uh, could it, would what have you thought of that Ultimate no. Warrior coming in? No, not in on that one. No, because he wanted it to be about him, and not, he wasn't going to come in to make Sting a star. And that's what that spot was for: was to enhance Sting. Sting was the guy. That's it. Yeah. 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 The Alex Podcast Network wants to know if you have any funny st- uh, stories about Oli doing the Black Scorpion voice. Well, just to see him doing it, and then when he got done, looking around the room, because he knew it was the shits, too, <laughs> waiting on somebody to say something, oh. which, would, which would give him an out to start cussing, but nobody said nothing, and he just kind of finished and then just kind of looked around the room. Everybody was just either walking out or had their back to him or whatever. What do you say? He's the booker. And everybody knew it was the shits. I mean, and then he we just knew got, he yeah. knew it was the shits. And, and, and he just probably gets done and, get, and, and is like, "What? What am I doing? You know, what's going on?" This you know, he would have said he would have said something. Oh, what the fuck you think? I, what, what am I supposed to do? Ah, uh, so he was, like know? I said, he was between a rock and a hard place at this point in his career. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Rock yeah. Oli was between a rock and a hard place. Bingo. There you go. Well, Arn, uh, regarding our personal health, it's easy to become frustrated. Speaking of frustrated with the plot process and lack of results, the fad diets, the Instagram workouts aren't always the answer that our listeners may be looking for. But if, if like me, you're searching for a better gut health, just a way to get started with your mental uh, energy and, and more energy in general. Double A and I want to tell you about our long-term partner. That's Athletic Greens. Arn has said it over and over again. Just one scoop gives you 75 high-quality vitamins and minerals. I'm talking improving your gut health, sleeping better, improving your focus. What's not to like? This is a slam dunk. And Arn, I know you and Brock have been all in on this product. In case you missed the show last week, we're out be waiting for something with Amazon to show up. We are ready to l- reload. They love it, man, and they want more of it. So you hear them, Athletic Greens. Hook up uh, Arn and Brock. They need it. They count on it. They love it. And listen, you can get hooked up too. Less than three bucks a day. It's worth the investment. Seven thousand five star reviews. And I'm telling you, it's going to give you everything you need conveniently for your daily nutrition. And uh, to make it easy, they're going to give you uh, a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. So let's get to it. How do you get this amazing supplement package? You go to athleticgreens.com forward slash ARN. Again, that is athleticgreens with an S dot com forward slash ARN. To take ownership over your health, pick up that ultimate daily nutritional insurance, and come on, it's time to get hold. Take hold of your health and really start doing whatever it takes to sleep better, be focused, and improve your gut health. Again, athleticgreens.com forward slash arm. Well, Arn, we move on, and the match is set between Sting and the Black Scorpion for the Clash of the Champions. Flair's going to challenge Luger for the U.S. title with the intention of becoming the number one contender for Sting's title. Arn, this might surprise you a little bit, but I doubt it will. We have the clip of the finish between Sting and the Black Scorpion. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to suffer together through this one in our first clip of the week. I see you shaking your head. Here we go. Do we have to? We have to. We do. It's part of our contractual obligation. Here we go. Clash of the Champions. Let's check it out. He's, so, he's going to unmask. Sting says, take it off. Let's see who you are, guy. He's going for the laces. We're going to find out right here. He won the match with a stinger. He's got another mask on. He's got another mask on. What the heck is that? He said if he lost. Wait a minute, Jim. What's that coming down the ramp? Look. Bob, look at the back. In the back back there. What? Is, hey, look at Sting. Look at Jim, who is that? What is that? My God, that, that's the scorpion. That's is the that? Black Scorpion. That's who, the Black Scorpion. Who in the heck was he wrestling? Who was a man? That, look at Sting. He's stunned. Total astonishment by the champion of the world. Is that the Black Scorpion? The Black. I thought he was wrestling. Yeah. There's the Black Scorpion on the rampart. 
What is going on here? And look at the stare down. And Jim, we're just as stunned. Everybody in the arena is just as stunned as Sting is. Sting just had one heck of a match. He won the match to retain the world title. But there is the Black Scorpion. The Black Scorpion has sent a mercenary. He's playing mind games for the heavyweight champion of the world. Boy, he's a poor playing mind games. That much is for sure. Fans, we're going to be back. We still got time. I'm going to talk to Steam. Don't go away. We'll be right back on TBS. Ladies and gentlemen from Asheville, I think we can all say congratulations to the Stinger for retaining the world's heavyweight championship. However, it was a great match. Quite obviously, by the looks of the man that was on the, the rampway, you did not beat the Black Scorpion in the ring. The guy on the rampway has to be the Black Scorpion. What's going on? What kind of mind game is this man attempting to play? Rossi, I feel about the same way I did just going into this match. I came here to accomplish something. I did not accomplish it. Still don't know who he is. I don't know why he wants me. I don't know why he can't just fight me man to man, take his mask off or whatever it is. Just get down and dirty in the middle of the ring. I don't know what his deal is. I know that you have looked at the videotape of his interviews time and time again. He says 1986 is the key year. California is the state. You started wrestling in 86. We know you're from California. Wait just a second. We may not get to the bottom of this now. Here comes Sid Vicious. Now wait just a second, man. Well, let me tell you something, Sting. You think you got some problems with the Black Scorpion? I'm the man you've got problems with because I want that. Sorry for the interruption, champ. Sid, I got enough on my mind as it is just trying to figure out who the Black Scorpion is, okay? If you want a championship match against me, talk to the championship committee. I got nothing against it, but right now I'm thinking nothing but Black Scorpion until I find out who he is. Thanks, Sting. I said I'm talking to you, Sting! Hey, Vicious, look out from behind! Sid Vicious is attacking! Sting or Bob? really high, attacking Sting, hitting him now with a championship belt. The Sting had his back to him. He lost him. Huh? Shut up, Jim Ross. I want these people to know something. I'm going to be the next world champion. The Sting Vicious rules the world. Okay, so is Sting fighting Black Scorpion? Is Sting fighting Sid? Is he fighting But Like, there's a lot going on here. Flying by the seat of the pants, but the promo was a little more intense, right? It, oh, absolutely. He's and getting he's getting more comfortable with that. Yep, yep. yep. And uh, it's fair to say we can also never put over how good Jr. is. I mean, he's oh. telling he, even uh, with the silly shit, you know. He, if you're not thinking what you should be, he tells you what you should be thinking. He helps the story along every single time. And even with something like this, like, like, you know, you and I have talked about how bad it was. He makes it believable. Uh, he, and even though he may even think this is pure garbage, he's selling it and making it and, and getting us invested as, as, as fans, uh, in the best way possible. So I can't put over Jim Ross enough with what he did. Speaking of believable, he, as we saw here, and as we listened, sit interrupt sting and Jr. saved the segment by laying out the challenge. And uh, subsequently, then the stinger. Arn, uh, Sid looked like a million bucks. He's intense, believable. Uh, but this time, he doesn't have the rest of the horsemen around him. Um, and it made for a, a good segment. Uh, the offense, office seems like they're now positioning him as an unbeatable monster. And we've discussed that you and Flair helped make that happen by featuring him whenever appropriate. So my question is simple. Why even mess with the Black Scorpion at all when you have Sid right here at your fingertips for Sting? You're asking me? <laughs> uh, yeah, a lot I mean, of bad yeah. decisions were being made. You know, all you had to do was just have the black scorpion appear the next week, and it's Sid. And in your mind, this is all Herd. It's, this is all like direction from Herd. Had to be. Yeah. 
Well, and it's crazy. Think about it, Oli. And then you have a guy, you're talking commentator, JR, but you also have a guy, JR, who knew the business, who worked for Cowboy, who would go take his talents to WWF eventually and become one of the best talent relations guy and a guy that helps with creative and all that sitting right there, right there at your fingertips that you can draw from. So it's just something to really go back and look at it. Uh, and listen, because these two stories are so different. Do you remember when giving Sid the push to the main event was decided upon? Do you remember when that was? Cause you have these two angles here running concurrently. Not really. It's, yeah. it's just, you know, it's just stuff would you'd get to TV and find out they were going to go a certain direction with certain guys, and you figure, well, where's the build? Well, there's no build. We're just going to do it. And uh, you just learn to accept it in those days. You were, you were getting paid every two weeks, come rain or shine. At the end of the day, you're right. Is my paycheck still arriving on time, and I'm just going to show up and do my job? I signed a three-year contract, and from what I was seeing and understanding, you know, that check came every two weeks, no matter if there was no shows booked, one show booked, or 14 shows booked. Yeah. So I wasn't going to screw that deal up. I just came from purgatory. I was yeah. going to I I just you. hold my nose and do what I'm told. Makes a lot of sense, and they would get things right. Like I said, and we'll get there, Sid eventually is in the main event spot at Halloween Havoc. Uh, so there you go. For most of his career, Sid Vicious claimed he was the man who ruled the world. The confidence, the intensity, and swagger Sid carried was unmatched by anyone in the wrestling business. And fellas, if you want to be the man who rules the bedroom, strut, oh. <laughs> strut and ass with that 1990 Sid Vicious confidence and intensity, you need to look no further than our pals at Blue Chew. Isn't that right, Arn? Tell me you don't wear assless chaps or a lime green thong or something. Please, please calm me down because you just enjoy this part of the show way too much. Buddy, it's, it's just trying to figure out how me and, yes, the research guys involved and even this stuff too, how we can come up with some fun Blue Chew material just to try to pop you each and every week. And, and it's weaving in the story. And this, and this week it happens to be about Sid strutting that ass. And here we are. <laughs> Listen, Blue Chew can give you that Sid Vicious look and demeanor if you're looking for. You might not have those traps. You might not have those abs. But my God, when it comes to performing in the bedroom, Blue Chew can help take you to that level. And I'm talking about very, very discreetly. They have an online pharmacy. You go to bluechew.com. You can consult with one of their licensed medical providers. And you, too, can be the man that rules the world in the bedroom when it comes time. You'll receive that prescription within days. And the best part, if you don't like to swallow pills, there ain't no problem with that. They can give you tablets, just like your old Flintstones used to take when you were a kid. They're chewable, too. We get it. There's all kinds of reasons guys are struggling to perform, whether they're in their own heads for multiple reasons. Performance anxiety, they can't live up to what they used to do in their 20s and 30s. We've all been there. Maybe you got some kind of health issue. Maybe you like to eat the hoagies and the pizza. So you're struggling, struggling like Wilford Brimley did with the diabetes. And so the unit ain't working like it once did. Blue Chew is there to kick in. And my goodness, if you're not tapping into it, now is the time. So go check it out, bluechew.com. Check it out. And with this promo code ARN, you just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com, promo code ARN. And you will receive your first month free. ARN, it don't get much better than free, does it? No, it don't. And free is great. And when it's something that benefits you like this, it's more than great. Just tell me one thing. You don't take these things early during the night, do you? And here's why I ask, because once you've become Tarzan and you've beat on your chest and... I didn't know what you were going to say there. Go and you have tortured the poor missus, you don't put on your pajamas with feet in them and then walk around the house with that pup tent going on, do you? <laughs> no, no. No, with, with the family still roaming around, we got that's exactly it. I got a family roaming around, and my my kids don't need to see daddy in his footy pajamas with his pup tent. You know? How do you explain that? You you can't. You don't. 
Uh, there's no amount of, you know, you can't carry a book. Of, the trapper God. keepers, like I used to use in high school, they ain't around anymore to hide that crotchal region. So uh, that's out. Bluechew.com, guys, get it done for you. Sign up today. They have options, aren't They can get you where you take it and you're ready in 20 minutes. They also have pills that if you want to take so that you're ready for about a 24 to 48 hour period, you're ready to go for all 24 to 48 hours. Yeah, and just because you're done, it doesn't mean that you're done and things go back to normal. You're kind right. of stuck with the results there sometimes. But that's okay because your significant other could be game for round two and round three, aren't So... 38 years? No. <laughs> One blue chew ride, and, uh, and that's it, buddy. That's yeah, it. Exactly. You want me to make you a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? That's, that's it. Oh, this is fantastic. In any event, Sid Vicious and Sting are on a collision course with the destination of Chi-Town. That's right, Chicago, Illinois, the site of Havoc 1990. And speaking of Halloween Havoc, uh, after the Clash of Champions, where we saw Sting beat down by Sid and where Flair failed to beat Luger, then Nature Boy is confronted by two certified badasses named Ron Simmons and Butch Reed, collectively known as Doom. Arn. In our second clip of the week, we had the first of many interactions the Horsemen will have with Doom. And this one's going to feature our buddy Theodore R. Long and the most dangerous announcer in the business, Gary Michael Capetta. And uh, I want to talk to you about Gary Michael after this. Let's take a look at the confrontation and the subsequent responses. Our second clip of the week, Doom confronts the Horsemen. Ladies and gentlemen, we're standing here this week talking with Ric Flair. Rick, could you tell me, with Sting and also the dudes with attitudes, what's your, what are your plans for the future? Well, my agenda is full right now, Gary. As for Sting, Ric Flair has been a world champion on six different occasions. Sting knows, the wrestling world knows. Hey, this is our locker room. How about doing your interviews your someplace? Your locker room? Yeah. Pal, this is my locker room when you were still a referee. You don't get in my face. Oh, you want to continue man. this? Let me tell you something, Flair. Problem? Now, look here. No. Yeah. There's a problem, all right. Would you like and it to be you one? seem to be the problem. I tell you right. one thing: we're not worried about the four horsemen. Anybody? It's three of us right here. Only one. Of Sting you. and Luger didn't worry about him either until they got to the hospital and they yeah, said what happened. You, you You're breathing right. off my shoulder yeah. pretty hard here. You got a problem with the all right, guys? Look, we got to get back to the program. Hey, what are you rolling with these two? Hey, I don't sweat you or you. Let's get out of here. Let's get back to the program. Once again, if we got a problem, we can resolve it right out there. There's a lot of big things going on right now in the NWA. And the biggest thing that's happening right now is the four horsemen going around talking about they're going to be the NWA World Tag Team Champions. Well, let me say something to you, Ric Flair, former champion. Let me say something to you, Arn Anderson, follower. I don't care nothing about the four horsemen. I don't care nothing about how many times you've been world champion, Ric Flair. All I care about is more money, more money, and this means more money. So Horseman Doom's going to take you out wherever it be. Simmons Reed, a lot of people tell us that you're real successful. But gentlemen, let me explain something to you. you. Don't bluff us. We've been everywhere you've been. We are the measuring stick. You want to find out how good you are? Jump on the horseman. You've made the mistake now of saying you could beat us. You may have beaten the Steiners. You may have beaten Rock and Roll. You may have beaten a half a dozen other guys. But now you got to walk that aisle and you got to look at Ric Flair and Arn Anderson. Woo! Ah, oh, man. So listen, that first segment, that felt, I, I enjoyed it because it had a level of realism to it. It was just all so abrupt. Uh, and I enjoyed that. What'd you think of, uh, what'd you think of that bit? Yeah, I'm sure that's going to end badly for me. <laughs> Simmons is all man, buddy. And Butch Reed is too. And what a team they made. Teddy, you know, with the ha-ha stuff fit perfectly. What a blend those guys. Those guys were a great team. It was it was interesting because it's just Flair by himself and then all three of them and and he's still talking his smack and I'm like, buddy, they it, these three will well at least those two guys, maybe not Teddy Long. I love this line about 
what are you doing? You're, you know, <laughs> former referee. But those two guys will annihilate you. So it was good to see you come in from behind. I want to ask you about Gary Michael Capetta. I mean, he was the voice. He was the ring announcer again that I remember so much going to shows back in these days in Philadelphia at the Civic Center, and he would get the crowd fired up. Any good Gary Michael Capetta stories or memories about uh, GMC? Well, he's just a pro. Uh, he always reminded me of being like maybe a, a boxing announcer. You know how they're always dressed perfect, the yes. tux, handsome guy, hair perfectly quaffed, and just a perfect voice. You know, more than being a uh, wrestling yes. You know, announcer, he looked more like a boxing announcer, but he was just always a gentleman, always a pro. He would come in the locker room, get dressed, disappear you wouldn't see him till after the show he would come back in get undressed out the door he went he did a masterful job of getting the audience ready for the wrestling shows i always remember that i had a, a buddy that i would go see wrestling with such a fan for gary michael capetta i just loved everything about him so there we are had an opportunity to talk to you a little bit about him uh, but we'll move on and on an episode of the danger zone in an interview conducted by paul e dangerously you address doom because i guess you had a death wish uh, as did the nature boy until, uh, yeah um and you're interrupted by the tag champs again and we have the segment again our third clip of the week we're going to take a look at this one this is now at the danger zone Why can't the two most powerful forces in the NWA, Doom and the Horsemen? Well, Paulie, let me explain something to you. I was taking a shower sometime back, and it seems like these guys that have been bullying their way around the NWA decided they're going to infringe on Rick's interview time. Well, you see, their mathematics is real bad. I think the comment came up, you're by yourself. There's only one of you. There's never one Horseman. There's always somebody, there's always another horseman lurking around the aisle, if you understand what I'm saying. I think Teddy Long bit up more than he can chew. I think Teddy Long, watch out here. Reading Ron Simmons, better take the opportunity to enjoy the notoriety of being. I just about enough of you, McMahon, running your mouth. Talking about what the horsemen are going to do to do. Well, let me tell you something. Surely you're not talking to me, little man. Hey. Oh, no, a shoving match at Suey right here on Channel 9. It may break loose. Flair, Arn, and Doom. We're going to have more fans right after this. Stay tuned. Wow, right here on Channel 9, all hell's breaking loose, Arn. That was... Uh... That was that was fun, and uh, when did everybody realize that Teddy Long could be a mouthpiece and not just a referee anymore? He was good, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Teddy's very entertaining. He just, just I just bust out laughing every time I see him now, because I mean he would play that music on the way to the ring, which was uh, Hammer Time, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, which just and he would be dancing and doing his his deal all the way to the ring. It was just a they were a good package. Th let's think about this too. So, you know, the last time it was kind of two heel groups, uh, you, you got to think about it when you and Tully were taking on the midnight express, we covered that. That was in 1988, but do you remember how and why it was decided to put horsemen in a program with doom? Uh, because listen, is this part of the decision to move Rick out of the title picture? Uh, or, you know, the, cause they could have plugged Barry and you in with doom. Do you remember anything about how this all came about with you guys and doom? Uh, I just don't think that Flair and Sting was an option. This was probably the next best choice. And it gives them a rub too, right? As a brand new up and coming tag team. I would think so. You know, and, and the matches, pay, we knew the matches would pay, pay off. It wasn't yeah. a question of 
them being good. It was just getting there in a way that made sense. So it's it's fun too to see these tag teams that you're taking on now that you're back from the WWF are teams that are the Steiners, shredded, beefed up. Now here come Doom, beefed up. I mean, these guys are like whipping ass. No more, not saying anything about rock and roll and midnights and those, but they were a different build of guys, fast, quick pace, speed, agility, where now there's some beef that are coming after you boys. Obviously, in a, a Legion of Doom, we, we, we were always, uh, you know, badasses. But now, here you, here you are, you're back, and you're, you're facing some ass kickers. It's actually really a miracle that I'm sitting here talking to you today. Isn't it, it is. It is. You know, I, if nothing else, I had to be at least durable. To you, survive the beatings. You took know, a good ass kicking, Arn. You did. Well, we'll get to it, I'm sure, in upcoming shows. Uh, Barry Windham and I had a street fight with those two guys. I want to say it was in maybe the Kiel Auditorium or something in Kansas City or somewhere that was a son of a bitch. I hope it's featured in one of our shows coming up. I'm sure. I'm sure we'll have that. The researcher is listening, and man, he loves him some more. And so we'll get that. But we have a number of questions concerning you and Flair teaming together from our listeners. So I'm going to go rapid fire with you, and we're going to get to uh, all these questions. The first is the coach, Coach Rosie, Josh Rosenbaum, and he says, uh, "How was it having Nature Boy as a tag team partner? Do you do you believe that you guys had good chemistry?" Yeah, it's just you're talking about a rub. It was a huge rub to be considered equal and to be his partner and, you know, have a one fourth share in the match. You know, it was cause it was all top guys. I love this question from uh, money. Michael McClanahan, the official accountant of ad free shows. He says, what did you learn from working tag team matches with Rick? Conversely, does arm believe he was able to teach Rick anything about tag team wrestling as Rick was traditionally a singles wrestler. I don't think I learned it. Yeah, I don't think I learned anything as far as a tag team strategist from Rick. Rick was a single, and he would go in and have a single match and tag me in, and I would go in and kind of have a little bit of a single match because I knew when I tagged back out, Rick was going to do what Rick did, and he had his stuff, and he was going to do. I wouldn't say that he was ever in a position to be a great tag team wrestler and utilize manipulation of the ring and the, the ropes and the referee and all that. That was more my gig. Yeah. So as far as him having to figure out how to work tag team, was there, Hey, Arn, what? he just did what he wanted. He just did what he wanted. <laughs> I got you. He was Ric Flair and he got away with it. So when he was tagged, he did his thing. And when he tagged you, you did your thing. Yeah. And the audience loved everything he did. So uh, there yep, was no, so it there was no letdown. There you go. Drew uh, Landry's up next. He said, uh, where do you rank Doom as one of your opponents? You got Rockers and Rock and Roll Express and the Midnight Express and Demolition and Heart Foundation. After that group, would you consider Doom to be kind of that next tier? Somewhere in that fifth, sixth yeah. spot. The matches were good. We just weren't blessed with a great build and enough promo time and just you know, get there in the right way. You know, it was kind of bum rushed in. Eddie Prather wants to know, where do you rank Ron Simmons in terms of all time badasses in the wrestling business? Number two behind the Vegematic. You know, the yeah, human Vegematic yeah. daddy. There you go. Uh, there you go, Eddie. Thanks for the question. Uh, also, Arnold, we also have a comment from someone you wrestled back in 1990, a comment from someone you wrestled. Uh, concerning wrestling against you and Rick, Timothy Hughes, a member of the ad free community wrote the following arm. I jobbed for you and Rick in 1990 and he took us over to you and introduced and said, Arn, these are the men we have the pleasure of doing business with tonight. Was this a common thing that Rick did because I've jobbed for others in WCW, but they never made me feel like I was actually doing business with them. And I must say, I never felt anything. It looked rough, but it was a very easy night. I'll tell anyone who asks about you all being totally professional with me. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Well, I was always respectful to there were just, we're all just human beings. You know, we were positioned to be part of the regular crew. They were coming to TV to do a job. I'd been through the same thing when I first started. You know, that's the way you did. You would go to TV and you'd get smacked around and 
the main thing is you be safe with everybody. There's one rule in this business that, that holds up today, or it should. It should be the number one is when you take a guy out in the ring, you have a match with him, you return him to his family in the same way that you found him in one piece. And uh, that's that's the rule of thumb. You know, it can be nice and snug and, and nice and solid, but you don't get reckless. You don't drop anybody on their head. You don't kick them in the teeth. You don't kick them in the nuts. You know, there's you just uh, treat them respectfully, and that includes backstage before the match and backstage after the match. Ah, there you go. Now, well said. Well, Arm, back in 1990, you were hard-pressed to find tougher guys than Butch Reed and Ron Simmons, but even the baddest of the bad still needed a good night's sleep after whooping some horseman ass. Unfortunately, the NWA Tag Team Champions weren't subjected to whatever sheets the hotel carried. Uh, They were subjected to that, and if only these guys had access to sheets inspired by NASA. That's right. These sheets are developed by Miracle Brand. And Arn, we've talked about it before right here on the show. Temperature at night can have one of the greatest impacts on your sweet sleep quality. And if you wake up too hot or too cold, then you're not doing it right. And I highly recommend you check out Miracle Brand's bed sheets. They're inspired by silver infused fabrics made by NASA. Miracle Brand makes temperature regulating bedding so you can sleep at the perfect temperature all night long. And Arn, how important is good bed rest, my friend. Well, welcome aboard yes. as a sponsor, number one. Glad to have you. I value a good night's sleep about as much as anything these days. Get a little older, you know, you need it to get through the day, function, and the fact that you don't have to wash them as much, well, that's just a blessing for the mama, for mama. That's right. You know, and, uh, I like it cool in the bed, and that's how I sleep well. Nothing worse than being hot, trying to sleep. There's the answer. Absolutely, you're right, and you said it. Self-cleaning, they're infused with natural silver that prevents 99.9% of bacterial growth, leaving them to stay cleaner and fresh three times longer than other sheets. Man, you can't beat that. They're luxurious, they're comfortable, they're made of quality materials, and they're the perfect holiday gift Miracle sheets are the perfect gift for spouses, friends, or family. So who doesn't want better sleep and luxurious feeling bed sheets? So check it out. This is the way you guys can get them now. Go to trymiracle.com forward slash Arn to try it today or gift it to someone special this holiday season. And again, if you want that special deal, then this is what you do. You use promo code Arn at checkout. Right there at checkout. Put in the code ARN, and you're going to get three free towels as well. They're so confident in their product, it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you're not satisfied, you're going to get a full refund. So upgrade your sleep with Miracle Brand. Go to miracle trymiracle.com slash ARN and use the code ARN to claim that three-piece towel set I just talked about and save 40% off. And as ARN said, we want to thank you, Miracle Brand, for sponsoring this episode. Arna, we're continuing to get great questions, as always, from our listeners. Doom is a favorite of so many of our listeners, and rightfully so. But before we get out of here, we have one final piece of business to attend to, and that was during an enhancement match on the NWA Worldwide. Teddy Long addressed you and the Nature Boy accepting the challenge of the Horseman on behalf of Simmons and Reed. And in our final clip of the week, we're going to show how the situation escalated. Here we go, Arn. Doom and the Horsemen. Let's check it out. Out here to refresh your memory. Everybody has seen Doom, the Soul Brothers, the NWA World Tag Team Champions, run Rick Flair and Arn Anderson out of the dressing room. You've seen us beat them up in the ring. So now the showdown has come. I'm ready to put the World Tag Team titles on the line. Rick Flair and Arn Anderson, are you ready to take them? I would say that. The situation between the horseman and Doom has gone beyond now just a verbal war. Well, it's sad, as I repeated last week, it's sad to see friends of mine doing battle with each other, but usually in situations like this, when you have four men of the caliber of Ric Flair and Arn Anderson and Doom in the ring together, some fireworks are going to go off and somebody is going to get hurt. But I, I sort of hate it on my own part because I'm friends with all those guys, as I'm sure you are too, Tony. Arn Anderson with us this week. The Nature Boy Rick Flair not here. Barry Window, Sid Vicious coming up at our next event. 
And Arn Anderson, the enforcer, you know, he has been one half of the World Tag Team Champions on occasion, the Nature Boy, Ric Flair. Well, when Somebody you talk about ago. all four men at the ring at the same time, every man is a champion in his own right. Oh. Arn Flair, of course, is the World Television Champion at the present time. Ric Flair, six times World's Heavyweight Champion and doomed the World's Tag Team Champions. So this is a classic matchup. Straddles him, pulls right up on the shoulder with, a, with an arm bar. So Brian, Dutch, is Brian Pillman here today? Yeah, Brian Pillman's here today. Uh, you okay. said some very derogatory comments the opening of the program about his involvement that we're going to see on the wrestling wrap-up. We'll hold it. I want the fans. Right I'm not going to say anything about Good. it to the fans see it. Good. Then you'll see my point. Okay. I do want to ask you about, though, you know, you talk about that Arn Flair, Reed and Simmons, and even Theodore R. Long and members of the Horsemen, they are all your friends. So maybe for the first time you can be objective here when I ask you this question. Doom against Flair and Arn. Who do you think would come out ahead? Uh, it's pretty tough trying can, to be a No, 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 no. Yes, it is. It is tough. I, I'm, but can I plead the Fifth Amendment on this? Yeah, you because sometimes when you take sides, you lose friends. I don't want to lose friends. I'm not involved in this. It's, it's no skin off my back. I just I just hate to see it because they're all nice guys. You take sides when you're talking about a flying Brian. Well, that's the whole talking about a story. Stick. Flying Brian, somebody should take sides against So them. you're not being objective is what it is. Right to the arm now. Right over top, Arn Anderson with a wrist lock. Tony, don't try to put me on the spot like that anymore. Break, break Sawyer with the right hand, trying to get out of it. Anderson by the head, takes him down, and stomps right away to the arm. Boy, he stays right with that one part of the body, doesn't he? Well, you see now, if Doom, if they're a smart team led by Teddy Long, like I think they are, they'll be watching every move that Arn Anderson is making, as well as Ric Flair. And by the same token, Anderson and Flair, they're going to be watching Doom. I would. I would if I was in their situation. I'd be, I'd have eyes only for them. Right to the arm. Great arm takedown that time. And Arn Anderson now stomps away right on the shoulder once again. That was a hit song one time. Eyes only for you. For team. your eyes only, wasn't it? Well, something like that. There it is. There it is. The spine buster and Arn Anderson puts him out. Very quick work. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the match, the world television champion, on it! Watch out! Doom! Both members of Doom! Stomping away on Arn Anderson! They were watching in the dressing room, and now they see an opportunity to get Arn Anderson and by himself. Himself. We've got to get out of here. We're going to break. We'll be right back. we got to get out of here. Arn, our final clip of the week is you getting beat down, getting that ass beat by those tree trunks and thick arms of Doom. I'd like to get out of there too. Shit. How? I mean, how is that a way to wrap up the show this week with the beatdown <clears throat> from Doom? I mean, you talked about it. Thank God you're still mobile and have have unbelievable. Oh, uh, it must not have been my time. <laughs> Listen, they they they're out there. They're showing that real physicality. They're bringing it every single time. And but regarding the storytelling and setting up this match. With this ambush in conjunction with Teddy being a brash loudmouth, which you said, great, great uh, pairing, if you will, of, of all three of these together. Do you think it mattered that, again, about this being two heel teams working together? No, I don't think so. There was probably a shortage of star quality. Gotcha. And the roster, and they just needed a match that had a question mark behind it, which that one did. You couldn't predict a winner, I don't think, with those four guys. Um, sometimes you're just booked on just that question mark alone. Well, Arn, uh, this is going to put a bow on September of 1990, but I'm really excited about next week because it's one of my favorite WCW pay-per-views of all time. Halloween Havoc 1990. The Horsemen are working up and down this car. We're going to discuss the tag title match with Doom as well as the main event with Sid and Sting for the world title. But before we get out of here, two important reminders. Number one, arnshow.com. Check it out. That's where you're going to find uh, episodes of this show, former episodes of this show. You're going to find the link to Box of Gimmicks, where you can find all the merch for Arn Show and the Four Horsemen. Some cool new designs and merch going up. Arn and I and the team are really working hard, Ryan and Marcus, on the horseman jackets, buddy. We're hoping that we can have something out soon for those. I know you're excited about that. Absolutely. It's been a request, you know, because there have been so few of them put out. You know, it's a rarity, and that's what most guys ask me. Hey, 
remember those jackets I used to wear? How do I get one of those? Well, we're, we're working on it tirelessly, trust me. There are new hats on the site, Horseman hats. Also, the new orange show, Horseman Country T-shirt in uh, the old Mid-Atlantic graphic, uh, another keeper. So check it out. Grab your merch. It's perfect time of year to put some stuff on the on the Christmas or the holiday shopping list as well. So check it out over there. And then arncomic.com, arncomic.com, November 15th. And uh, as this drops on the main feed, that's just a few short days away. There's going to be a lot of options, a lot of package, lots of packages and giveaways. Arn, I cannot wait to see your life story in comic book form. They did a tremendous job with Tony Schiavone's. I have it here on my shelf, and I can't wait to get a copy of yours. And I know you're excited to, to see it as well. Kickstarter is the path. That's going to get it started. So thank you for your support in advance. Hope you're, I think you're going to enjoy it. There you go. Well, listen, uh, we're going to be back again for more of our next week. And on behalf of the Hall of Famer, he's Arn Anderson. This is Paul Bromwell. We'll see you right here again next week on Arn.